Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Throughout the season of Lent and through the services of Holy Week up to today, we have been meditating on Psalm 41, the psalm we spoke responsively together earlier in the service. And today we're focusing on a verse that you read at the end, and it goes like this. You have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. That may seem a strange thing to say. You may not want to say that God has upheld you because of your integrity. After all, integrity means whole and undivided. It indicates an original, unblemished condition. Because of my integrity. David wrote these words, but not because he wanted to sing and pray them all by himself. David wrote Psalm 41 because he wanted you to sing and pray together with him. He wanted you to say to God in sincerity and truth, you have upheld me, O Lord, because of my integrity. But it's kind of hard to say, isn't it? Because we know ourselves, and I'm not sure I can say that God has upheld me because of my integrity. But the answer from the Scriptures is quite clear. The answer to, can I say this in honesty and truth, even standing in the presence of God? Yes, you can. You can because you are a baptized child of Christ, and because today He is risen. The resurrection of our Lord has guaranteed that your answer is indeed yes, even though you might feel tempted to think it is no. Because of my integrity. Everybody wants to have integrity, but nobody actually has it, at least not in the original main sense of the word. Our loss of integrity began all the way back in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve and the fall into sin, forever stained and blemished, no longer whole and undivided as we were made to be. Integrity indicates an original unblemished condition which we have lost. Because it's such a beautiful idea to be someone of integrity, this word is often used to describe such beautiful qualities as honesty, faithfulness, and purity. And we all want to be described with such wonderful words, and to a certain extent, we all can be. But even still, you may hesitate to pray to the Lord, you have upheld me because of my integrity. Perhaps you do not think all the qualities of integrity rightly describe you, at least not all the time. Perhaps you can see a different set of qualities at work inside yourself. Here's a few examples from the scriptures of how we are described. Not whole and undivided, but sometimes double-minded from James, and other times doubtful from Matthew. Certainly not in an original unblemished condition, but stained with sin, hampered by the memory of our wrongdoings, and marked with regret. Honest, sure, maybe sometimes, but not always. True and faithful, but only when no temptation is present. And most reliable and fairly honorable and hopefully incorruptible, but nobody's perfect. Such realizations might make it feel a little brazen or dishonest to say in the presence of God, you have upheld me because of my integrity. We all want to have integrity. In most cases, we would love to be described as those who do. But we would probably not want to talk that way about ourselves in the presence of God. After all, nothing escapes His vision. All of those things we hide in our hearts and in our minds that we don't want others to see or know, He sees and He knows. He knows our hearts, the Scriptures tell us. He knows where our integrity falls apart. Perhaps it's wisest and best to mumble Psalm 41 when it states, You have upheld me because of my integrity. 
or to pray those words with the thought that they probably refer to somebody else and not really to me. But no, throughout Lent we've been emphasizing that even though David wrote Psalm 41, it's about Jesus because all the Scriptures bear witness to Him. And because it's about Jesus and you have been baptized into Christ, it is about you, that these words are your words, that they're not just about somebody else, they're also about you. You have upheld me because of my integrity. What does our union with Christ indicate when it comes to these words? It indicates that when you were baptized, you were joined to Christ through all of the events of this past week. You were joined to Him in His death to sin on the cross, and today we're celebrating the fact that we are joined to Him in His new, never-ending, resurrected life. At your baptism, your Lord's perfection became yours and your sins became His. His strength became yours and your weakness became His. His life became yours and your death became His. His perfect and unblemished integrity became yours. And any lack of integrity in you, He bore in Himself on the cross. You are, as Peter puts it, now partakers of the divine nature. Because of your baptism, every Scripture passage that speaks about Jesus now also speaks about you. In all of human history, only Christ Jesus our Lord could pray in the presence of God His Father on the basis of His own merit and say, you have upheld me because of my integrity. But the good news of today is that Jesus has joined Himself to you in your baptism. And because He has joined Himself to you, we can faithfully and honestly pray in the presence of God, you have upheld me because of my integrity. Integrity means whole and undivided. And our original unblemished condition has been restored in Jesus today. All those beautiful words that describe qualities of integrity, honesty, faithfulness, purity, reliability, uprightness, honor, incorruptibility, and forthrightness, we certainly wouldn't be worried about applying those words to Jesus. They all describe Him quite, quite well. But because of what He has done, they now describe you. I don't know if you noticed, uh, for the members here at Ascension, you get our weekly email. Do you notice the address at the top? It says, Dear Saints of Ascension. Today we're celebrating that we have been made saints in Christ. That all of these words now describe us, not because of anything we have done, but because of what He has done for us on the cross, and today as we celebrate the emptiness of His tomb. Because of our Lord's personal integrity, God raised Him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for Him to be held by it. And as you heard in our Gospel reading today, when the women went to the tomb, they found it empty, with the stone rolled away, and they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. They were afraid wasn't at all what they were expecting. They were there to anoint the dead corpse of Jesus. And what does the young man tell them? He says, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let that echo and shout reign in your ears today and throughout all the season of Easter, because by the power of His death and the victory of His resurrection, Jesus has now given all of His integrity to you, so that you may have His perfect integrity forever. Our Lord's personal integrity has been delivered to you in the waters of holy baptism, which joined you both to His death and resurrection. His integrity has miraculously entered into your heart and mind through the proclamation of of His saving gospel word. And our Lord's personal integrity, 
given personally to you, each of you individually, is the power by which you can pray to the Lord with all godliness and honesty. You have upheld me because of my integrity. King David, likewise, did not rely on his own integrity when he prayed these words. Instead, he relied upon the integrity of his Christ, just as we do today. You and I don't rely on our integrity either, but instead one that has been given to us freely by grace. For David's Lord is our Lord, David's prayer is therefore our prayer, and David's rejoicing in eternity is likewise our rejoicing, both now and forever. And so we close with the same words that David does as he recognizes that his God delivers him. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Why? Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.